impressed me a little bit last night, albeit against the Hawks playing back to back out here in L.A. But the Hawks had just embarrassed the Clippers in the same building, 110 to 93. And they did jump ahead last night, 11 to 2. That's when LeBron and A.D. started playing bully ball. D'Angelo Russell started making threes. Lakers 136, Hawks 105. D'Lo's six threes tied Nick Van Exel's single season Laker record for threes at 183. D'Lo has done it in 64 games while it took Van Exel 80 games. Paul, did anything you saw last night change your mind about the Lakers not being able to get out of the play in? <laughs> Skip. They're playing against the Atlanta Hawks. I got it. Who are also playing. They're in the 10th spot. No yep. Trey Young. Yep. This is a game they're supposed to win. Now, the thing I looked at about the Lakers, though, is like this is the way they have to play. The ball distribution was there. You know, you didn't have uh, LeBron taking 20 shots, AD nope. taking 18 to 20 shots. When you actually give these other guys the ball, they actually can make shots. And they, they're gonna, you're going to need these guys down the stretch like Russell, like Reeves, as we continue to, to see them thrive. And so it just showed me if they play this way, yeah. no matter if it's the Atlanta Hawks or Minnesota or Milwaukee, that they can win. But, I mean, this doesn't show me they can make a playoff run because they beat the lowly Atlanta Hawks. You know, they have to do this against better teams on a consistent basis. And until I see that, I just don't think they'll make the playoffs. So your point is until you see it. So you, you, you're you not saying that getting 16 assists with the two between LeBron and AD, you're not saying that, hey, they can't do it. You just haven't seen it. I haven't seen it against good teams on a consistent basis. You know, they have these games versus, like yeah. I said, a Minnesota and Milwaukee a week ago and then come back and you lose to the Golden State Warriors uh, in Sacramento. Okay. You know, so it shows me it's just inconsistent on a night in and night out basis. Now let's see how they finish out the season. Now say they they win like three or four or five games in a row coming down the stretch, I'll have more confidence in them winning the play in and possibly making the playoffs. So tell me this, because I didn't I obviously I didn't play in the NBA and I've never been in a seven game series. You have. Mm -hmm. One offs to me as a person who just watches and analyzes basketball, one offs to me is you can beat a dude. You know, I beat you in right. May and I beat you again in March and April. Right. But when I got a seven-game series over a week and a half time span, that's different. That's way different. So uh, I think they can do that in that short period opposed to seeing a team in December then seeing a team again late no, January. No, I think it's the opposite, Keith. I think it's the opposite. They can one off like they did in the... In the in-season tournament, you win one game against that team. Yes. But when a team, when the Lakers play against a team seven times and they have to match up and say the better team is always going to show in a seven-game series. Okay. And the Lakers aren't consistent enough to win a seven-game series yet. But when I look at last year, and, I, and last year is really all I could go on in the seven-game series, this is the same Laker team, Skip, that if you put, go back to last year, we were wondering... What it was, it was like they lose to this type of team, they beat this team, they lose, lose, they win a team that's not very good. But when they got in the playoffs and they played these seven games, when they went to Memphis, was it Memphis, Golden State, mm -hmm. they handled their business. Mm -hmm. Pre pretty easily. Pretty but easily. Very convincingly, yeah. And that was a seven-game right. stretch. Yep. All right. So I think they can do that again. I'm looking at the teams that are at the top that they might have to match up against. Okay, so they, 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 they got to play the Thunder in Minnesota. I don't think they scared of either one of them. If you look at how they've lost this year, they've lost to these young teams who are fast and athletic. That's not a good matchup for them. You said Golden State Warriors. That's a great matchup for them. Yeah, older I agree. team I agree. that doesn't run and get up and down the court. Yeah, but, but when you got to play these fast young teams who are going to get up on you on defense, who are going to run the break, who are going to move the ball, make the extra pass, that's tough on the Lakers. But how, yeah. explain to me then... Skip, if that what, Pat, what, what Paul is saying, yeah. how come they essentially dominated OKC and Minnesota they when they have, played them? They have dominated Those are young them. teams. Yeah. So they took care of business against them. Those even teams. the Clippers, <laughs> they, even the Clippers, when they played the Clippers, seen those they took care of business. As the year go on, though. Those teams, you got to understand, those young teams who are at the top right now, they're playing this season. They're figuring out who they are. 50 games, 60 games, they're like, all right, they're confident. We know who we are now. 
We know we can stand face-to-face -face with any team in the league at this stage in the season. So come playoff time, no, no matter what the Lakers did against them during the regular season, I've been on a young team to where come playoff time, we can look these teams in the face and say, all right, we can beat y'all. We're not afraid of y'all no more. Y'all are older team. Y'all time is up. Let's do it. All right. The reason I was slightly impressed last night is my bar is set so low for this team, even at home. I have seen this team lose home games to teams worse than the Atlanta Hawks. I've seen it all year long. When you least expect it, they come out just deadheaded, lifeless, listless, like, where are you and what are you doing? Down by 20 at yeah. middle of the second yeah. quarter. So right. you confident in that? No, in a series. I, it, no okay. I'm with Skip. <laughs> Atlanta said, okay, watch this. We're going to carry on our momentum. We, we ran the Clippers off this floor just 24 mm -hmm. hours ago. Watch this. And it's 11 to 2. And to LeBron's credit, he said, not in my house, not tonight, because he played hard last night. Yeah. On both ends of the floor, he played hard. It's the freaking Hawks. I give it to you. But you, you got to start somewhere. And I told you yesterday, they now have Philadelphia at home and Indiana at home. Mm -hmm. They need to win these games and start to build up a little momentum. That's what they have to do. I, I'm not writing this team off because it can match up with the top team. It, it has beaten Minnesota and Oklahoma City convincingly. And I got it to Paul. When they play Denver, they play the hell out of Denver. They don't know how to close against De Denver. closes on them every time. But every the six of the last seven games have gone to the wire against Denver. They're a team that plays slow, and the Lakers don't get run off the floor by them. Right? Yeah, but are you right. confident in these series yeah. that D'Angelo Russell is going to play the way he's okay. playing? So check this out. This is what gets me about the Lakers. While your Celtics have shot the most threes in the league by far. By far. The Lakers have shot the least threes in the league by far. They don't shoot threes yet. I look at D'Lo. He's shooting 42% from three for the year. I'm looking at LeBron. He's having a career three-point shooting year at 40.6%. I'm looking at Rui at 41%. I'm looking at the Lakers as a team collectively. They're seventh in the league in three-point shooting percentage. Uh -huh. They don't shoot a lot of threes. I mean, they shoot the bottom of the barrel threes. I don't really get it. If, if I'm them, if I've got D'Lo, I want what was Darwin Ham's sort of wacky quote. He said he doesn't have the green light. He's got the green room. I want him in a green room where he, mm -hmm. see, whenever it touches your hands, shoot it as quickly as you can shoot it because he just tied the all-time Laker record for a single season three. Yeah, he had a nice yeah. night last yeah. night, but okay. two and, nights ago, roller I don't want him shooting. Okay, you against know? Golden State yeah. in the fourth quarter, he was one of six. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Okay, I it, it, the only thing that makes sense, you got three guys shooting 40%. You know what that's telling me? that the ball is being dominated by LeBron and AD. Mm. So if you guys aren't spreading the ball, making the extra pass, and you got three guys in a three-point driven league shooting over 40%, and you guys are close to last, if not, what you say, last in last. three points last. attempts? attempts. So yeah. why is that? If, you got, if you're a great shooting know. team, if you okay. got these great shooters, it's because the ball is not getting distributed in the right people's hands. The, 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 the ball is not getting driven downhill to create open shots in the corner in the wing, yeah. which tells me that the stars are holding the ball longer than they need to, yeah. to where you can't get these shots and play at a pace that you need to to get more three-point shots. Okay, you made a powerful point yesterday that LeBron is ball hogging a little too much. He's stat machining a little too much as he goes over 40,000 points. Yet last night was a blueprint. If, if you're going to go places, exactly. this, this is it. Because I'm looking at shot attempts last night. LeBron took 14, and AD took 14, and D'Angelo took 14. Well, that, that that's worked. That's the way they have to yeah. play. Okay. Right? And yet, the Atlanta Hawks play less defense than the Lakers play, and the Lakers don't play very much defense. So, so that's, that's why that's that, a gimme. That's got to be okay? the blueprint. LeBron has to shoot a higher percentage. Yeah. He doesn't have to play as many minutes. No. And he has to allow he's, he's, Reeves. He's 16 in the league and Delo, last night. Yeah, the yeah. Reeves and D'Lo, to me, have to get 25 shots between them. All right. Together. So the Lakers are now tied with the Nets for 18th in defensive efficiency. In individual defensive win shares, LeBron is number one on the Lakers, but he ranks 86th in the league. That's all you need to know right there. <laughs> Your best defender is LeBron James in, in defensive win shares, and he's 86th in the NBA, and AD is second. He's 113th in the NBA. They, they play no defense, no defense, and you can't yet yet. Keyshawn, have we seen them take it up a couple levels when yeah, they need to? But AD started, well, I'm going to say started complaining. AD yeah. mentioned yeah. the poor defensive effort a couple games he ago. He did. That 
they've been put in. So does that go back to the coach? Is the coach dialing it up the way they need to defensively? Yeah. Or because defense pours all effort. Right? I mean, it's, it's well, all you got to want They don't to. have any versatility on defense. And in, 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 in the league to where you need multiple guys that can defend multiple positions. Mm -hmm. They don't have that. You know, if you get a mismatch where you set a pick on a guy at Reeves' is garden or D'Angelo Russell is garden or LeBron is his garden, you're, you're going to take advantage of that. You need positionless guys who can play multiple positions and guard multiple positions on the court. And they don't have that. You know, if you switch Reed on a big man yeah, or on a point lose. guard. He's going to lose. Exactly. And, and that's what they well, he don't gonna try. He's going to try. He's a try-hard guy, but he's most likely going to lose. Exactly. Okay. Paul, he brought up Jared Vanderbilt yesterday, and you scoffed, but he is by far their best defender. He, he is a he's their pretty most good versatile he, defender. He, he is. Because he's long and he's strong and he's got a little nasty in him. He hasn't and, and been he with tries. us in a minute. And he, he hadn't been. been there. He hadn't been there, and I don't know what's his deal. And Cam Reddish defends at a fairly high level, and he's not he's available not right now. And we talked about Gabe Vincent. He took and made so many big shots for Miami. He hadn't been there the whole year. I mean, and, ever and now, since he signed, we haven't seen him. Okay, and now Christian Wood, I, I like, I'm not saying he's a life changer, but Christian Wood can shoot threes, and he, he, he plays bigger than he, he measures. Mm -hmm. He's 6'10", and he hadn't been there for a while. And now they waited a whole month and said, oh, I think he needs some meniscus cleanup. So he got scoped yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, and now they're saying 